Welcome everybody to U of Man Live. My name is Tim. Tonight we have a panel of NOS, bottom left, Odessa, bottom right, and our main featured guest tonight is Dan Willis. Dan is a multi-talented gentleman who has been on our channel before, but we didn't deep dive as much as we're going to do tonight. Tonight we're going to be speaking about uh, Galactic Federation approved crystal technology and a spaceship build using that science. Please welcome my friend and my guest, Dan Willis. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Good to Pleasure, see you. Tim. Uh, love going into a deep dive on this uh, subject that uh, we're learning more all the time about. Right. It's interesting to me because finally we're seeing something that, that was given to humanity by a non-human intelligence that is has actually been constructed and is working. So uh, without further ado, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the Galactic Federation of Worlds and how you got in contact with them and what projects you're working on? Oh, um, well, it's a long story. <laughs> you know, I, you know, going way back to 1969, I had a high level top secret security clearance, and the Navy was receiving extraterrestrial reports coming out of the oceans, and it sought my, in, you know, my curiosity of, about this. And then uh, in the uh, late 70s, I had a ET interaction experience with a being that, uh, Kind of conveyed the geometry of consciousness and it made me uh want to try to understand what this would re relate it with quartz crystals and so i sought out uh dr marcel vogel set up a laboratory and uh, it was cutting quartz crystals interfacing with consciousness and then uh by the year 2022 um you know i've done a number of of shows talking about you know the history of Basically, our planet's been technologically hijacked, and uh, we've been under psychological warfare for a long time regarding this whole issue. And uh, my dear friend, Lena Danan, invited me on a show, and so we talked a little bit about uh, the history of, uh, you know, how we got to where we are today. Um, and then she inquired about my uh, work with Dr. Marcel Vogel with crystals. And uh, she said that uh, her contact in the Galactic Federation of Worlds, Thorhan Redion, his younger brother was at that time going to a university in the Pleiades learning how to terraform planets or what they call being a star maker. And that uh, he knows a little bit about crystals, you know. <laughs> Uh, so you can imagine, and that uh, we could possibly ask him some questions. So from April of 2022 to um, just last night, uh, we've been continually uh, over the time, off and on, uh, exchanging. Uh, we've got probably about a, oh, probably 160, 170 pages of question and answer because of the prime directive. They, they can't just tell me everything. <laughs> I have to ask questions. And um, I've been extremely honored and privileged that uh, the Galactic Federation of World's High Command has authorized uh, the sharing of some of this information. And so I'm just finding it extremely fascinating. And... Uh, in our exchanges, now how this works, by the way, um, if people aren't familiar with Elena Danan, uh, when she was nine years old, she was abducted by the Greys, and um, she was rescued by the Galactic Federation, and they had to repurpose the implant that was in her um, to be uh, like a secure, it's like a quantum communication device, and how it works is what she sees and hears and experiences they can see and hear and experience, you know, it, it can be turned off and on. But um, this is how uh, I've been able to, she acts like a, a go-between between Jen Hanna Redion, who's uh, since then 
He's graduated from the university and is currently on Mars uh, doing terraforming operations. And uh, this is how we're able to exchange information. So in the many, many pages of questions and the answers, um, I've been able to uh, I ask certain questions that uh, was actually on a list of things not to ask in the prime directive that uh, he couldn't answer. And his older brother, Thorhan, was able to get authorization from the Galactic Federation of Worlds. And, and so he was able to give some very privileged information of how they use crystals and how this method of using the crystals is how they power their starships how they power their entire planet on the planet era and the pleiades um and so you know we're continuing to learn more on how uh these technologies uh can be put to maybe practical application here on this planet and there's been two technological gifts that he has given um you know, one I was able to present last year in September in front of about 800 and some people at the uh, Galactic Spiritual Formers Conference in Orlando, Florida, where I brought my science team. And we were able to present for the first time on this planet a frill generator crystal that, uh, that working together, we were able to... Um, create this. And uh, it's still being optimized. And the uh, the other gift was uh, yes, that's it. <laughs> notice the uh, notice it looks like coils in there. One's copper going clockwise, the other one's silver going counterclockwise. Um, they're pulsed at frequency of forty ninety six hertz, which opens up a dual torsion field, which within the crystal, um, there's um i can go into uh some slides if you want and it, it's hard sure. to hard to describe sure um let me see uh okay i'm going to okay what uh share screen Okay, if you can see that. Um, yeah, hold on a second here. This, here is what's, this is what's called the eye of the crystal. It is formed by two uh, termination angles. One is 51.84 or 52 degrees, a lot of people know it as. Uh, the other one's a 60 degree angle. And what happens is these two um, terminations they, um, excuse me, I don't have this organized. I'm just, oh, there we go. Uh, they form two vortices. The pyramidal shape forms a vort vortex. And these vortexes, like two mirrors, are going in counter-rotational to each other. And when they come together, they open up a singularity into the... Um, into the void, into, into the matrix that allows you to connect to any place in time and space, any dimension, any density. Um, and when this is piezoelectrically stimulated uh, by either uh, physical pressure, you know, you can use your, 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 your fingers, you know, on a, on a crystal in that area, or you can use... Um, uh, let's see how Elena and I have this uh, set up here. Or you can put like silver electrodes on it and it sends in compression waves and it opens up this singularity vortex. And it can be used for a number of different, different applications. Um, let's see. Uh, Dr. Marcel Vogel, he was working with, uh, in the beginning, like with different sides of the crystal, but he didn't realize that, uh, he got this in a dream, that when you cut it in alignment with the hexagonal core of the crystal, um, you get this special attribute that he wasn't aware of, 
-hmm. And so, um, let's see. Okay. So, um, so it, it, it's, it's kind of fascinating that, um, this, uh, thrill that emanates when the eye of the crystal is open with the torsion fields, um, it, the frill can be collected and on their planet, and I'll show you um, how they do it. So we do have a question from the chat room. Um, Newton 100 was asking, would the vibration of the rotation of the crystal actually cause the crystal to shatter? No. Um, no, the, the frequency of quartz is uh, 40, 96 hertz. You can clear out imprints. This is uh, their older sister, Thor Hans and Jen Hans' older sister. She's an attendant on the planet Era. They have these pyramids where they, it generates, um, in the big cities on the planet Era, they have these large pyramids and they have the large crystals with the silver and copper coils and they have, um, the frill goes up and it's, it's transponded through the power web of their city so that they don't use wires like we do. It's, everything's wireless that it's tran transferred to. Uh, in the smaller communities, they have, they have pyramids as well, but they're not as big, but it transfers the, um, transfers the energy throughout the community. And if you're way out in the boonies, like I am, you can have a small unit like the one that was pictured earlier, that the one that we recreated, that not only it will power the habitat, but the frill energy is very beneficial. It was, yeah, that was back in uh, October last year. Uh, we presented this to the first time on our planet. Um, it uh, will make plants grow like crazy. It's, the applications can be uh, not only for irrigation for plants, but it can, um, the frill can go into the body and it removes disharmonics. Uh, the molecular oscillations within your body uh, can remove the dissonance and therefore it's like healing to the body. So it has like healing applications and, uh, you know, plant irrigation, agricultural operation, but we're not allowed. And I had 10 years experience <laughs> dealing with, uh, you know, just nightmares of national security orders and vendors being, you know, bumped off and one thing after another. Uh, we can't generate electrical power with it yet until this control structure is dismantled on the, on the planet. Mm -hmm. uh, NOS? uh yeah i agree what what i I'd, I'd like to hear because i'm coming from the same direction as you are i understand the totality of the social engineering method that's being used to you know keep the people away from understanding their real place in the universe right. um but from the perspective of you know looking at the problems that are being used to control the masses, the methods that they're using for these things. Um, what have you, what essentially what avenues have you entertained that you think would possibly eliminate them without a drastic outside intervention? You mean the, the control structure on the planet? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, <laughs> The uh, enemies of humanity have, uh, you know, they, we're under psychological warfare. You know, myself being an ex-ABC newsman, uh, and, you know, I went to Washington to testify under oath, you know, back in 2001. I was one of the 21 top secret military witnesses with Dr. Stephen Greer back then, and I thought it was going to be a world-changing event. We're exposing everything, you know. And uh, they made it sound like I uh, wanted to have a congressional hearing on the reality of UFOs. So I became, a, I didn't even know what Operation Mockingbird was in 2001. So, you know, the mainstream media, um, 
I don't know. I think the U.S. Marines need to go into all the corporate offices and seize them and use the uh, emergency broadcast system to educate everybody. Good um, idea. I love it. You know, is, is my own my own uh, feeling on it. But no, I think uh, there is a uh, is a global awakening thanks to shows like yours. You know that um, is exponential since we are all connected into this morphogenic field that, that Jan Han calls the planetary matrix. Uh, we did some experiments with uh, Elena and I uh, did a show called you know changing the planetary timeline with a, with a crystal, you know, in a positive way. Uh, we had a bunch of live people on everybody at the same time. They pulsed their breath, which was an interesting thing that Dr. Marcel Vogel discovered and that Jen Han confirmed. And uh, we spiked the Schumann resonance right at that particular point because all, all of our minds are in interresonance with the ionospheric shell of the planet. So we're all interconnected. And, you know, there's a lot of us that are, um, more of us are becoming aware. And, you know, there's some people that, you know, stay glued to their TV set and they trust whatever. <laughs> they have no comprehension whatsoever yeah. that uh, the whole system has been infiltrated a long time ago and is being used against us so um yeah. right it's amazing yeah. how much people don't realize uh is what's going on around them other than you know the daily lives that they lead um i was talking to my neighbor earlier and he he was watching believe it or not ancient aliens all weekend he said oh my gosh i didn't realize how much is going on around us that I wasn't aware of. And I said, that's because you don't, you, you don't think in that way. And we've actually been dumbed down. And I still think we're being dumbed down by the media and by newspapers and, and educational systems and through uh, chemtrails <laughs> that are spreading, you know, chemical particles that are, affecting the way we think and ultra low frequencies and all that stuff, you know? So um, anything that you can bring to light in regards to um, new technologies that can benefit human, human, I can't talk, humanity, then uh, that's a good thing in my book. Um, we do have... Yeah, true. Well, the Rockefellers took over our education system a long time ago. You know, they even rewrote the history of World War II, you know, to hide the Nazi escape and infiltration. Um, right. Uh, Space Cow has a question for you. Do inclusions in the crystal affect its performance? Does a what on the crystal? Inclusions, you know, like defects. Uh does it in a bubble crack does it affect the, the 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 way it rotates or the way it puts out for does it affect it uh the way it rotates um no uh, when it's rotating does the inclusion affect the process of the crystal oh, oh 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 the the inclusions inside the crystal yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Oh. Oh. Gotcha. Gotcha. Sorry, my hearing's terrible. <laughs> Leftovers from the Vietnam War. Um, the uh, crystal can have inclusions in it in every place, but the eye of the crystal, which is the uh, area I showed you earlier, where the right. two uh, angles come together, that right. area needs to be clear. Yeah. That's it. That area. <clears throat> needs to have uh, no inclusions in it, but you can have inclusions in other areas. Um, you know, there's a company that, uh, you know, I have no financial interest in this whatsoever, uh, Crystal Light and Sound. They've been in instructing their cutters to cut it according to Genhan specifications. And you can get one for like, uh, you know, 170 bucks, you know, uh, that, you know, the Vogel crystals are very expensive, you know, but if you yeah. want to... Uh, experiment um uh, like that's a four-sided that uh marcel vogel cut that one as a gift for me um and it was inspired over the you know the tree of life um and you know when you get into um 
when you get into the um it, it's fascinating i'm going to be getting deeper into the geometry of these angles and how one's receptive one x is a transponder in the matrix which is the 51.84 52 degrees you know generally and the the 60 degree is uh connected to the tetrahedral fractal um holographic matrix that we're in because a tetrahedron every angle on a tetrahedron is 60 degrees so it's kind of like a resonance with the uh you know like people see the flower of life you know uh that's basically representative of the tetrahedral lattice structure that we're in and everything forms oh, within... up oh, there you go good good exactly like yeah you got some good slides there <laughs> Uh, the one on the left actually matches, almost matches the book cover of Nas's book that she put out called Good. Conspiracy Prime. It's identical, actually. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the same. Yeah. It is. There you go. Hmm. Yeah, so, um, you know, we're going to keep working on uh, getting more information, going deeper into this and, uh, you know, just focusing on beneficial uses. We're doing everything open source, giving it freely to scientists around the world that can reproduce it. If you go to marcelvogel.org. Oh, there you go. God, you're so good on this. Uh, <laughs> um, there's a don't make it yet. We're still optimizing it. Una of the Intergalactic Confederation confirmed it's generating frill, but it greatly needs optimizing, and we're increasing the power to the torsion fields to do that. And I'm going to be doing, you know, like I said, a plant experiment showing be showing a control and showing it next to the uh, frill generator and and seeing the difference in the uh, in the growth between the two. Um, so I'm just trying to, trying to, you know, this is a uh, very intellectually interesting, but, you know, I'm trying to produce some practical, uh, things that, uh, we can use on this planet. Some practical applications. I gotcha. Um, um, people have been asking, is it, it's a generator, but I also noticed in your spaceship build, um, that it can be used to power um, a spacecraft through thought? Yeah, let me get uh, a um, screen. Um, I got to go, let's see. Um, Okay, uh, this is uh, images are a property of Elena. I'm I'm borrowing them <laughs> just to uh, talk about the show since you made the title about the spacecraft. So um, this is um, this is the central power core of the crystal. Uh, of it's like a cylinder with the crystals in it. What happens is the the craft when it's near a planet. Uh, the, the planet uh, actually generates the gravity, creates these compression waves. Compression waves are then create frill uh, that are collected in the crystals, and the crystals in the central central core here uh, transfer piezoelectrically the power into these. You can see there's two red bands here. This is like high speed uh, red mercury that is spinning at a really high speed. And uh, these magnetic coils around the central core induce uh, a perpendicular charge into the other one. So you've got these two, one's going one way and the other one's going perpendicular to it. And when you get these two torsion fields going perpendicular to each other, what it does is it cancels the mass and um, and the gravity. And uh, this is uh, like this ionized mercury that's being used, similar to, um, you know the uh, the German. Um, let's see what I got. I got the other one. The here. frill. 
Yeah, the the Hanabu, you know, how they were using um this is a uh, on the geometry. Um yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, they were using the uh rotational uh toroidal, they had a pillar in the middle and they would spin uh copper in one direction and something else in a different direction. Right, which would the, hyper spin the mercury. That was yeah, in it's chamber. it's this red ionized mercury that, uh, in fact, with the uh, frill generator crystal with the torsion field coils that we have, um, if it can reach a point of saturation where the crystal will actually lift, <laughs> it'll lose mass. And so, uh, but it can become um, dangerous, I guess, at a certain point where it can transcend densities and turn into light. Uh, but the crystals we're using are not too much of a concern because they're a lot smaller. The ones they use are quite a bit larger than, than we use, and they're, they can be dangerous. In fact, uh, if you're in one of the pyramidal frill generators uh, with the field on, I understand you can be dematerialized which which wouldn't be good. No. That would be bad. Um, in regards to the spaceship build, mm -hmm. I noticed in the information I gathered from you and Elena um, that the flex liner was mentioned, the one that Mark McCandlish was always talking about. Oh, I know a lot about that one. When I was, uh, before we went to testify at the National Press Club, I was with Mark at the... Uh, in the Hilton at the bar, yeah. And uh, he knew I had a good technical background, and so he went over all the details of how they use in the central core there, um, mercury. And then there's a Tesla configuration around it, and the capacitor is on the bottom. It was, it, you know, this is 1950s stuff that was built. Right. And uh, it, you can see on the uh, seat, you see there's a little ball hanging out on the chair. Right, that little little ball it actually um, you you move it and it changes the charge on the capacitor plates. It changes the direction of of the craft, and um, when the Tesla configuration uh, activates the mercury core in the center, it it cancels the mass of the uh, craft. And this is these are the antiques uh, that uh, his friend. Brad Sorison back in 1988 at Norton Air Force Base, they had a whole area that was like, uh, like screened off, you know, so people couldn't see it. You know, there was like the normal technology, but then there was for certain high levels of brass, they could see the uh, uh, alien reproduction vehicles that um, they had uh, like a mama, papa, baby, <laughs> you know, they have uh, three of them there uh, that were hovering uh, I, off the ground. I actually heard a report about a flex liner when uh, an officer went in to see a flex liner. He said it looked battered and old, like it had been used a lot. So oh, the, it, yeah, these are the antiques. You know, you can imagine, um, you know, what, they, what they've what they developed, you know, with... Uh, yeah. And I also heard that the flex liner had... Um, hyperluminal propulsion so it could go faster than light. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. And that yeah. was in the 50s. So if we had something that could go faster than light in the 50s, that makes me wonder where, where we are now. You and know, what's sad. Of, yeah, you know, I, I was friends with Mark, and, you know, he was going to testify at the June 2021 hearing about this technology. And, you know, the, uh, the, the officials, they keep denying that, we've developed this technology and uh it was mike tuber who revealed uh two years prior the you know the tic tac that got saturated on the media they wanted everybody to know about the tic tac mm -hmm. and the nimitz incident that uh it was u.s technology he came out the same week that mark was found dead with a gunshot to his head uh mm -hmm. and said you know, it's nothing to it. I made the whole thing up. There's nothing to it. It's like somebody knocked on both of their doors that week and says, you know, you're going to retract everything you said about the Tic Tac 
okay yeah. okay you know and mark said you know <laughs> you know and so uh you know it, it's kind of sad because uh his testimony and uh mike tuber's testimony both reveal that we've had this anti-gravity technology develop decades ago and uh you know it's you know it's why you do the shows, right? You got to expose the lies. Right. The thing about Mark McCandless, I've been following him up until his passing. And um, there is a theory out there that he wasn't, he didn't die on his own, man. He he was taken out because he, he was going to testify that day. Um, uh, I don't know if that's a fact or not, but that's, that's what the theory is. It's uh, hard to prove, but it's uh, the coincidence is off, off the chart, isn't it? Right, you know? because he had no intention ever of doing that, at least from what I've heard from his friends, that he he had every intention of living and continuing to spread the news about the flux line. Um, so and he's the one that did that really meticulous drawing. Oh yeah, he's a, a great, great, uh, great graphics artist that uh, took this sketch from Brad Soros and that did a rough sketch, and he just made it look uh, uh, much more accurate. And you know, they've been, uh, you know, look what uh, they did to Secretary of the Navy James Forrestal. You know, the, right. trying to reveal to the public that the the Germans had a breakaway civilization, had their own secret space program. And uh, MJ-12 uh, murdered him, you know, as it revealed in the MJ-12 document. Uh, you know, Forrestal's death was uh, necessary, but regrettable, but necessary, you know. Um, yeah, you found floating down the river, as I recall. Yeah, too bad. Yeah, yeah, they, they will do anything, anything to keep this, uh, this, this subject you know, and the same goes with the energy stuff. You know, I've, uh, well, I know, I know inventors that, uh, you know, that didn't make it, that came out with stuff. Right. We have very, uh, very good information from a person on our panel that is actually going to possibly be included in a government program to study information pertaining to energy sources and uh, things that could benefit humanity that could jeopardize her well-being and that happens to be NOS yeah we're, we're moving in, in the right direction the public is ready they know the information you know they they understand there's something more out there but they're not ready to get to the point of total acceptance, right? And the government's not going to help. It has to be the public that does it. Um, and they've ensured that there are enough of us with different skill sets to be able to bring forward information and cause that snowball effect, you know, that building up over time. There's this whole other world that's behind this curtain that is so far advanced that we're kept in this re technologically retarded state under psychological warfare. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing that gets me is the medical uh, system. I can share, uh, share a slide here regarding the uh, med bed technology. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, the metapods, yeah. The... Um, Let's see. Got a lot of slides, but it's not uh, organized. Okay. okay well, um, I, I, heard, I heard something about the Metapod beds re recently. I heard that a lot of them have actually been fully constructed operational models, but they're not being uh, stored here on Earth. They're being stored on the moon. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can pop up the slides here um dr marcel vogel you know after he retired from, he was ibm's head scientist uh, you know, like 140 patents and incredible genius uh he got into all the 
weird woo woo stuff, you know, crystals and plants and everything. And uh, I helped him set up a laboratory and got him a whole bunch of crystals and we're cutting it from medical doctors. And this one project I worked on with him was a holographic camera that um, was patented by the European Patent Office uh, back in 1955 uh, in Paris, France, and thousands of photos were made with it. Um, it, uh, it substantiated that the holographic field that we're in can be tunable through time. And this is what, you know, the Andromedans revealed to Alex Collier that how they, the ben, med beds work, they can take a holographic image of you that goes all the way back to your conception. And then they tune through the holographic field and pull out slides when your body was optimal. All the different parts of your body were optimal. And then they overlay it onto your body and your body morphs into that because the universe tends to perfection according to Jen Han. And my job on this project was to, we had a photographics plate. Here you can see a picture of a, a baby and a woman that's 50 miles away using a drop of blood. And it shows that you know any part of us acts as a, a fractal representation of the whole. And so they were able to tune forwards and backwards in the time, different levels of uh, development of the baby. And so I was attempting to take this technology to the point where we could see it on a uh, real-time display rather than a you know, cumbersome you know, photographic plate. You have to go through the development process every time. So that was one interesting um, you know, show we did with the, with the spike. Um, So, uh, let's see, stop I do. Screen. I do have. I do have a question for you, Dan. Somebody in the chat, and I don't remember exactly who it was, asked. Um, are terahertz crystals responsible for the actual name of Earth being Terra? Because uh, the Earth is made of crystal. We have crystals here. Could it be? Yeah. The Quartz Earth? is the most abundant, yes. Right. So maybe Terra, the name was derived from the fact of terahertz crystals? Uh, uh, well, the, the name is from uh, Greek, which means, uh, I think it means light. Um, don't quote me. <laughs> I think I remember that. Uh, Jen Han said that quartz is the purest element in the universe. It is, uh, it is resonant. The geometry of quartz crystal is resonant on all densities at the same time. So it's physical on all the densities. So it acts as a inner density bridge between, uh, and that's how uh, you know Marcel was using it for for healing because you can go into when you have a, a an issue going on in the body and uh, it's the the higher patterns form the lower the lower don't form the higher and so when you're able to bridge the the different densities and go into a higher level and create a change there it will be reflected into the 3d world and so uh crystals act like act like a like a bridge between these uh different densities cool uh not um wow i i, I was i was actually wondering because i was looking at the the presentation you had done on you know with you and, and Elena about the, the ship and its function with all the, you know, rotations for the, the, the system that fights the gravity. And it actually, with all of the individual components that were talked about, it looked like uh, the discussion was a modern day rendition of the accounting from Ezekiel's wheel in the Bible you know, from the, the historical reference in there, yeah. because you've got the wheels inside the wheels. 
right? Oh, oh, right. Yeah, that's kind of that's an interesting observation. And, yeah. and you have the the four separate beings controlling the four sets of those wheels. Right, and, right, right. And and you know, she was talking about the the piloting system where the flight deck, the pilot's movement is what moves the craft. And that is exactly what's described in Ezekiel's story. Mm -hmm is that as each of the individuals responsible for those sets of wheels within wheels would move, the craft would move with them. And one of the descriptions that Elena had given before with regard to the frill was this being, you know, consciousness energy, spirit energy. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, consciousness can affect the, uh, the frill energy. And in the description in the Bible, it says that when the spirit was with them, it was able to move, and when it was not, they couldn't. This is the exact same description of what you guys are talking about, right? Yeah, that, that should be good when all the this... references are out there that connect to what's being learned now, which should be driving people to take a deeper look at the mythologies that have survived because there's valuable information there. Oh yeah, it's all you know. Ancient stuff is all extraterrestrial related, mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of uh, um, you know we just need to catch up on uh, what the reality is, what happened back then with those uh, primitive cultures trying to interpret things. Exactly, mm -hmm. and how we can interpret it now so that we can put it to use. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, my God, you know, we sure could use, uh, you know, dismantle this corrupt medical system we have and have uh, have uh, our bodies, you know, restored to healthy points, uh, yeah. extend our our usable lifespan on this planet, um, be able to not have to travel and and take hours to go from one side of the plant to the other. You can be in yeah. minutes. Um, you know, we can bring out the, uh, you know, the quantum systems of communication so we don't use these dangerous uh, electromagnetic uh, means yeah. of communication, which are primitive. We can use quantum communications, which would replace, you know, our internet. Uh, you know, there's, there's just all sorts of... Uh, Improvements we could do on this planet that, uh, you know, the elements that uh, want to maintain us in a um, uh, certain level, you know, but, you know, we are, we're, we're you know, more people are catching on. Yeah, yeah I think, I think. It's harder and harder to retard the growth of, of humanity. It really will, it really will become more difficult and it is becoming more I, difficult. I believe that more people are awakening to the truth uh, in a good way. They're awakening. Um, Absolutely. And um, the mm -hmm. people that are awakening are actually trying to spread that information out to those who uh, blow it off as uh, conspiracy theory or uh, no, it can't be possible. Uh, but if you really ration it, rationale it all out it is possible and consciousness lately has been playing a big role mm -hmm. in how we see the universe and how we see ourselves and what i found interesting about your frill generator is that it can be activated with thought and i had said that earlier in the live mm -hmm. um and um that if you think about where you want to go inside those spacecraft, then you, you can go there just by thought. And this goes back to Roswell because when they uh, yeah. entered the Roswell disc, the plates. <laughs> right, they had the plates, but they didn't have any other controls. So they kept wondering how the craft was piloted. And they thought it was through thought. Now, a few years later after that, I know that the aerospace industry here in the United States was working on technology inside a fighter pilot's jet to where when they thought of something and they moved their head, then the missile would go where they were thinking. So it's thought and eye movement. 
because right, that's thing, fast drama brainwave uh like uh you know lena has a book about uh, you know area 51 about uh i'm trying to remember his name darn it um but he would he would be uh, a pilot in a system like that that uh could direct the uh the weapons and stuff you know back in uh Back with the Roswell situation, it was a, a general twining report. You know, they, they, there was no wires and there's no switches, no meters or anything like that. They, you know, they just were at a loss at how these things function, you know, where they uh, actually are a symbiotic extension of the consciousness and resonant with the DNA of the pilots. So I'm supposed to tell you, so glad to be here. Met Dan at the 2023 GSIC for a passing moment from Mark Davis. Mark. <laughs> and then we have a question for you. Does Dan have any practical advice on how we can use crystals in our daily life? For us newbies, should we have crystals in the home to help raise our own energies as well? Well, I um, highly recommend... Elena and I are working on class three. If you go to marcelvogel.org, you'll see on the menu list, there will be crystal classes. And we're, we're doing these free, you know. Uh, and uh, they're very extensive. And it's based on both the research work that uh, Marcel Vogel did, but we're expanding that greatly. And with the information that Jen Han already on has shared, and so, um, you know, the first class we did was on, you know, choosing a crystal, what the difference between the different crystals, why you'd want one over the other and so forth. And the uh, second class was on clearing the crystal, which is very important. In fact, our, our engineer, um, what you found is that if you use, um, let's say you have a crystal here, uh, our engineer engineered this oscillating device and you can hear that <laughs> um it puts out precisely it, you know down to uh, uh several several decimals of 40 96 hertz and if you put that over a crystal lattice structure what it does is it vibrates all the imprints and completely clears the crystal out so it's really important if you do any work with crystals that you have to remove the imprints out of the crystal first before using it. Uh, and so we went into a long thing on class two of all the different folklores that were all, you know, based on um, superstition, you know, it was like the salt and the moonlight and all these things. I know a lot of people were attached to different ways, but we broke it down to the uh, methods and we even demonstrated um, how, um, how it would clear the crystals. So our third class is going to be on, uh, not sure yet. <laughs> I'm uh, going to be talking with Elena tomorrow about it. We're putting together a whole lot of information. And I have a feeling it's going to go along the line of, since we know how, what crystals to, to select to use and how to clear it first, then okay. it's going to be probably an application. Do they all have to be clear crystals? Um, well, the, you know, if a crystal has, has its natural, um, uh, you know, like, uh, like here's a, here's, here's a crystal, right. And yeah. it's got its natural angles and the angles are, you know, 52 degrees, you know, or 51.84 naturally right. as it grows, it Ha acts as a transponder in the matrix and they and it's effective it works but as jen hannah says if you have a, a vocal crystal um it acts as a uh like a surgical tool to operate into the fabric of space-time um so it has now, to be a, a crystal clear crystal rather than a colored one uh well, you know, regular vocal crystals come in multiple, uh, you know, angles like that. But when you cut the crystal in alignment with the hexagonal, like all the vocal crystals can be used for for healing. And um, I kind of broke down Marcel's method that he taught the doctors, you know, how to 
use the crystal. I um, guess I guess what I was getting at, and I don't know if you understand me. Um, I understand the different angles and the different shapes of the crystal, but in regards to color, like a purple crystal. Oh, like or, amethyst or rose right. quartz or citrine. Right. Well, they all have their different attributes. The most universal is, is clear quartz. Okay, that's what I was trying to clarify. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, a Vogel crystal works, you know, up to 24 sides. Uh, uh, Marcel Vogel believed it was like up to 14 sides. And after that, it, it lost the vortex spin. But Jen Han was more generous. He set up the 24 sides. The vortex still, if you go up, you know, some people uh, <laughs> say you know, 144 sides or whatever. Um, but it works as a healing crystal. But if you want to open up the eye of the crystal, which allows you to open up the singularity vortex, which allows you to actually modify the holographic matrix by going into with your consciousness, you know, you prepare yourself ahead of time by going into a state of uh, gamma brain waves. Gamma brain waves open up these vortices, allows this to uh, to occur. And when you link in with your consciousness into the singularity vortex, what you imprint there um as jen Han said it won't wither in time but if you do it normally you know it withers in time but what happens is you when you imprint at a higher level like that it comes into manifestation so there's some pretty powerful um powerful things and you know as far as you know people wanting to you know they're mad at somebody they want to do something evil to them it won't work because uh as jen Han says the dissonance cannot attune to an ordered state of geometrical resonance and that love ac actually opens up the transcending capability of a crystal because you know as you can see with dr emoto's you know it's like you have like hate and and jealousy and you have love and gratitude it won't take form uh, water acts as an interdimensional bridge as does quartz and so uh, you can see that in the uh, you know, Dr. Emoto um, crystallizations. And the same is so with when you're imprinting into the holographic matrix. If you have a, a dissonant thought, it doesn't, um, it, it doesn't resonate. It dissipates because it, it has that dissonance because of the nature of the uh, geometry of the matrix. If that so are, are, are you saying that if you project love into the crystal through your thought process, right? Uh, will it overwrite the matrix then? Will it uh, do if you say, project will, love? It, will it take the matrix programming and change it into what you're projecting into the crystal? It will allow love is uh is like a secure channel uh jen han says it allows it to transcend into the higher densities when you're able to transcend into the higher density so you have you have like you care about everybody on the planet and you want to see something good happen or you're some, a loved one you know you 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 love them and you, you care about them and it's like you, you do something like that the 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 frequency of lo love is like the highest frequency. It's like connected to source. Um, and so when you intend love into a crystal, it, it activates its transcending cap capacity to uh, write into the holographic matrix. And Andrew says lots to absorb. I need to rewatch this episode. <laughs> Oh, I'm still learning too. Uh, I'm, it's exciting. I'm, I feel so humbled to be able to, um, you know, it's kind of a kind of a dream come true, you know, to be able to talk with a uh, an off planet scientist that's like thousands of years ahead of understanding, and you know, ever since uh, my experience with a, a being that uh, Elena identified as an amateur. Very loving being, large cranium and loving eyes and projected the geometry of the matrix. I've 
uh, seen a lot of things over the decades that collaborate with um, having scientific um, validity to what was shared. And so, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm at a kindergarten level, you know, <laughs> learning, uh, learning this information. Right. But I was, I was going to ask you, Dan, wasn't an emether uh, skinny bot? He was an emether. Remember Skinny Bob, the Skinny Bob videos that came out? Oh, right, out? right, right. Oh, over at Area 51, yeah. Yeah, he was an amateur. And um, I, I just wondered if that's what you saw through Elena's descriptions. Oh, let me, uh, let's see. Here is a uh, share screen. This is this is what the uh, this is what the being look like. You can see that. Yeah, there we go. And yeah. uh, this is a, uh, you know, this is this would be animated. Uh, it it started out with a star tetrahedron or a Merkaba, some people call it, and then another geometry formed within that. And the nested geometries went into infinity and then turned back to the sphere and. He was uh, conveying that at any point in our evolution, we're aware of the, the current density that we're in and the sub densities, but not of the higher, and that through love is how we evolve. And in uh, Elena's book, um, A Gift from the Stars, where she detailed 110 different species, she's come out with a new book now, with, it's incredible in full color, 150 different space bearing species. Uh, beings that she's actually have access to see the um the database of the galactic federation of worlds and and does all the details about each of these beings and this is what an emether looks like um and and it's it's, it's kind of interesting that uh, you know like she identified uh three planets in proxima centauri two years before nasa um I've been taking note of different things like a, a quake on Mars just before uh, NASA reports it or Neptune starts to heat up. So there's like things that um, things that there's, there's no way you know you would know this stuff you know unless you had direct access. And right. uh, Odessa. I am, um, I'm going to be totally half honest, completely honest with what I'm saying, just not completely honest and let you know. I'm having an ADHD moment. My brain just totally skipped out. So just listen. <laughs> I, know, I know the feeling. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Nos? Um, I actually wanted to ask a question that, that will help me connect to you better. When you want to enter a contemplative state to... Think about all the things that you've been exposed to and what you've learned and 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 where you go next with that. What music do you put on? Uh, yeah. what, what was that last part? No, music. Sorry, my hearing, music, my hearing so what bad. music would you put on to, to have as background while you're oh, what on? do I play? Yeah. Um Oh, ZZ Top. Yeah, no, no, I'm just kidding. Yes. Uh, <laughs> there, you, there you go. Yes, yes. No, no yes. just kidding. Um, um, I, actually, I've been I've been hitting the uh, frequency keys on the uh, crystal that there's a certain frequency key that you hope you hit at the compression node that opens up the vortex. And so I've been experimenting with the. Uh, they had to convert from their planet. Their frequency scale is different on the planet era than yeah. on our planet. And so they had to convert the frequencies. And so I've been experimenting with the different frequencies shot at the compression node in the crystal that helps open up. And it also helps bring out the, the frill in the crystal. Not as much as a frill generator, but the, uh, as you can see, this one, this one here, if you can, the, it's got, uh, you know, the silver electrodes on either side of the compression node that uh, is opening it up. So I'm, I'm experimenting. I'm, 
got a uh, jar here with a little Merkaba crystal in it. I'm, I, in the 80s, I was that doing telekinetic experiments, and so I'm seeing if I can um, move the object inside the jar uh, <laughs> with my mind and, uh, you know, just experimenting. <laughs> Not like my friend John Charles. He has an incredible ability of, uh, you know, being able to move objects and um, pull power, you know, from things. Uh, these his gamma brain waves are off the chart. Okay, Odette has a question. I do. How many plants are in your space right now? How many plants? You need plants around you. Oh, uh, there was a couple up here and the whole okay. bunch down down below and the greenhouse okay. is filled. Um, Just making sure. Just making <laughs> sure you need that. Yeah, my uh, my wife, Rebecca, is very instrumental in um, maintaining all the all the happy plants. <laughs> All right. Just you checking. know, scientists recently found out that uh, plants can actually communicate oh, between, yeah. e between each other. So mm -hmm. everything on the planet is communicating, and it can also show distress. So yeah. say say you uh, harvest some carrots from the ground, it can show distress from being harvested, and they've actually recorded it with electronic equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, you know, Marcel kind of uh, pioneered that, you know, it was in the book Secret Life of Plants. And, uh, you know, he was able to set up a split leaf philodendron in his IBM laboratory and was able to, uh, pulsing his breath, interesting, you know, when you just breathe normally, it, it didn't have an effect. But when you pulse your breath, it had an effect on the script chart. And, um, and then he uh, did it from seven miles away and was able to, with his colleague in the laboratory and make the script chart squiggle, you know, cause he could psychically tune into the plant. And then he went all the way to Prov Czechoslovakia and was able to tune into the plant showing the inverse square law of distance didn't matter. It was like instantaneous. Yeah. Um, so he was, he was kind of a pioneer. And in, uh, in fact, that's what got him into the crystals was because he had to give a course for creativity to all the IBM engineers. And so we saw this article about Cleve Baxter, the CIA polygraph expert that was working with plants. And so we had like 30 engineers and gave them this, this, this setup, you know, where you set up the plant with a script chart. And, um, and you said that squiggle changed his life. A lot of people within the chat room, Dan, are really engaging with everything that you say. So you are, um, your information is getting out there. It is definitely getting out there. Um, so we thank you for that. Uh, Mark Davis says, love the videos. Dan links us to Dr. Vogel. Um, ask Dan to contact him. I am just a fan follower of John uh charles moyan john charles. oh john charles yeah my dear friend mm -hmm. um uh, people want him to come on they, they want him to come well. on the show i i will i will ask him okay yeah thank and you. maybe, maybe thank we you. can have him on with you as well and get deeper into this subject that that would be, be really fun. uh be interesting fun. because we're trying to dig more into the actualization of non-human technology rather than just hearing about it. Because yeah, yeah, all, yeah. all of us in the community, all we ever hear is, oh, we've got cracks. Well, in my opinion, where's the proof? We, we've, got, we've got debris. Okay, in my opinion, where's the proof? You know, but you actually came out with a working frill generator. Well, and it, it's it's challenging because we don't have, uh, you know, putting it out there. Any scientists, you know, have an edge on uh, being able to quantify the uh, the frill. The only 
yeah, that's why I'm going to be doing the plant experiment because everybody can see, you know, one plant's growing crazy, the other one, you know, growing normal. Uh, sure. that show the effect of the frill on the, on you know living organisms. Now you can see the uh, the pulses of the silver and copper coils at 4096 hertz, the resonant frequency of quartz, and it's it's activating these dual torsion fields that are. Uh, perpendicular to each other creating this dual toroid that's opening up the um the eye of the crystal that's eliciting the the frill to come out and and that's how it works and we're going to get a little bit deeper um into um why these two vortices of the geometry that they are uh create this uh create this incredible effect that is like it's this is a this is like a, a core uh, a core technology i mean this is quite a gift i mean you had to get special permission in order to share this information um and so um did you have to yeah. get permission to share it with us tonight um they they said i was allowed to uh i was allowed to share it with the people of our planet so okay um, so we're I'm, included in that. i'm i'm grateful no i'm not not I'm not going to violate anything that they they recommend and uh you know the the prime directive is there for a good reason uh i think there's a lot of wisdom behind it i was uh i'm very honored that uh this piece of information about the eye of the crystal, something that, you know, is a basis of powering their starships, basis of powering their planet, I mean, is... Uh, it's a big deal to share. Oh, it's, it's incredible, sure. you know. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Like I said, I'm at a kindergarten level at this. And we're learning more all the time and... Uh, wanting to do you know you, people can just say anything right but if you can right. i want to um be able to quantify you know so people can, in the scientific community can look at this and say uh unquestionably you know this is doing something it's not just theoretical it's actually right. it's actually working that we're actually talking to a real scientist that's uh currently on Mars that's uh, doing terraforming operations. Yeah, NOS. Yeah, I, I, I think what it's what it's going to take to get the public on board is a lot more data. And that's what it's about. You know, the, the government can hide whatever information that they want, but they can't stop science. Science is going to keep moving forward. And all the data that's generated goes out to everyone. And, you know, it really looks bad for a government when the people expose them that way. And they've had their chance to avoid the image issues they're going to have. But it's going to be ugly in a fun way. Well, fun for some people who enjoy that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, Angela. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, well, I'm just saying, you know, we're we're on the uh, we're on the threshold of an incredible time in the history of our planet. Uh, right. My God, we you know, we, when we've been born into the psychological warfare and and, you know, the Invention Secrecy Act 1951, anybody that has anti-gravity, free energy and a list of other things. And mm -hmm. I've met and worked with a number of scientists that received national security orders that had solutions and things that, you know, just could not be released. Um, my God, we're going to have such a, um, <laughs> you know, it once once we can... Um, you know, using the rule of law to bring the enemies of humanity to justice and out of places of power so that, you know, we all want to work together in peace and uh, have a civilization that uh, is not hijacked by uh, elements that want to enslave humanity rather than liberate. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, I believe that personally, I believe that 
until we get rid of the monetary system, uh, money in general. Oh, um, yeah, like the quantum profit, financial. Yeah. Yeah, profiteering. Uh, it's not going to stop because it's all about the money and the control and the power behind it. And until that happens, I don't believe we'll ever have true disclosure, true transparency, or true growth in this world unless the rest of us like us keep pushing harder and harder every day. No, I agree, Tim, you know, it, because uh, the monetary system we have is easily corruptible. And uh, the quantum financial system is one solution that uh, I think could alleviate that problem. So we're going to moving into a lot of quantum stuff, you know, <laughs> quantum, uh, quantum healing, quantum communications. Um, yeah. Um, and the world would be a much better place. Hey, Nas, what do you think about quantum? Uh, well, there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff out there that is confusing the direction that the physicists are going when it comes to the, the quantum theory, um, because the primary drive into the, the quantum theory and the quantum physics that they're doing is that they couldn't resolve their problems with general relativity once they learned enough about gravity that there wasn't a base mathematical relationship that they could find to make all of it work together. And, you know, pulling, because they didn't have the knowledge or the technology to be able to resolve their, their issues with relativity, you know, they redirected resources onto the concept, like with, with where they're going with quantum gravity, they've been trying this for decades and, not a single one of their formulas has ever worked out. Nothing in the whole field there uh, is actually yeah. coming to fruition. Um, and it's, it's some guidance. It's yeah, it's, they, they need guidance, but essentially yeah. like where we're looking at with the technology, like what Dan's talking about is that humanity doesn't understand how to read the data of anything that would be created there because they don't have the technological equipment that is sensitive to that. They don't have the technological equipment that's sensitive to that because they didn't go through the sequential learning process of getting up to the point of creating that, right? Yeah. Our knowledge is generational. Every step forward that we make is on the shoulders of the ones that made all the steps of progress so that we had the knowledge to work with for those advancements. True, and, and our, our education system has been um, <laughs> compromised. And yeah. so we don't have, in, we have incomplete, uh, you know, physics and things that, uh, you know, such as, you know, e ether, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there is the ether, <laughs> you know, um, and, you know, that's how, uh, you know, it's the compression or scalar waves that interact with uh, interact with that generate the frill that the uh, crystals uh, work with. Um, you know, well, I think we're going to be doing a, a lot of catch up at some point. Mm -hmm. I hope so. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> um, I'm here for it. I'm here for it as well. As long as we get the information, we're able to spread it in, a, in an impartial way. I'm all for it. Uh, I say impartial because we need to stop the fighting, the infighting. We need yeah. to come together and unify. That's the whole thing. Kind of like the eye of the crystal. Um, the eye. When the eye opens up and generates its field, it has to generate some form of purity, uh, which in my sense, it, because you said there couldn't be any inclusions in the eye of the crystal. So it had to be a pure source of, of, of generated, um, I don't know how to explain it necessarily, uh, field. Uh, so in regards to us, we need to do the same thing. We need to come together to join to generate a positive field instead of all this negativity. And that's the biggest thing I have a problem with. Um, 
as long as people come on the channel and we treat them with respect and professionalism, as long as they return the favor, that is part of the plan of ascending into a better way of living uh, in love and and uh, genuine um, progression, in my opinion. Yeah, the uh, control elements. I want to keep it separated and keep us in fear. And right. um, the, the the thing that they're afraid is that we all be, become awake and aware because of shows like yours and many others that are using alternative media to go around the mainstream media, and that uh, and and consciousness. You know that we're all you know becoming more awake and aware that uh, we all unify together and. Uh, and from that point, we're, you know, nothing can stop us. You know, we're, uh, we're unified. Right. What do you think, yeah, Noss? I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Odessa. Go ahead, Odessa. I generally don't have much to say, but I would like to say that I think information, truth, and knowledge should not be doled out to people we deem are worthy. They should just be spread like manure on everything truth information and knowledge just put it out there and that's what we're here trying to do oh i believe something that Noah said a while back she said it's not knowledge that we need it's wisdom wisdom comes with knowledge but yes we do need some yeah. wisdom. wisdom so the knowledge should be free should just right. be there for everyone yeah wisdom you can't give to everyone knowledge you can well, we're right. in an ocean of disinformation, and <laughs> whenever the truth yeah. comes out, there's like a, a counter element that comes yeah. in to try to Business. try to discredit yeah. and attack it, and so forth. Yeah. More and I, uh, you know, I, 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 I've been researching for a long time, looking at all the authenticated documents and all the witness testimonies over the last several decades, and. You know, it's like when you do that, you know, it's like when, oh, my God, after another, you just realize that uh, what, what's been hidden. But um, when, uh, where was I going with that? Uh, <laughs> um, when you, I think it's important, you know, people ask questions, you know, and start researching and looking into things. You know, that's why I, uh, uh, if you go to the webmatrix.net, um, there's a section in there I did on, on, you know, all the secret space program, all the witnesses. And I did a section for the secret space program, people, the different people that I know and their testimonies. Uh, and then I did a special section on Elena and, uh, a lot of it's pulled from, uh, her work with Dr. Michael Sala. And, you know, I've just been noticing um, things that corroborate. And I've got a list of 23 different corroborations that Elena has revealed, you know, Thorhan has said through her. And then later it's scientifically verified. So when you start looking at, um, you know, there is disinformation assets out there but they they can't they don't have anything to back up what they're saying and so they eventually get a, get exposed yeah so it, it's like a it's a total war out there psychologically uh where they're trying to uh, like just recently um doc um dave rossi is a scientist that we've been communicating with he revealed that uh, the aerospace corporation is uh monitoring everything that elena is putting out and that they are actually working on Healing. ways to attempt to discredit her you know because it, it's they're afraid that um you know the people that are exposing what the true situation is it ruins yeah. their agenda because the agenda's need secrecy in order yeah, to yeah. hide behind you're preaching to the choir i completely understand what you're talking about i deal with that on a regular basis i've had for the last 
two years, maybe a little more. Mm -hmm. I, I've had a lot of interference, exactly like what Elena is dealing with because of NOS. Uh, and for the last, gosh, I don't know, eight months or something, since she's been here at my house, it's been worse. Uh, I, I still get drive-bys all the time. I get like a, a lot of interference. So I completely understand what you're talking about. And I think that the more we see that, the more we face that, the more we have to deal with that, the more determined I'm becoming. And I hope, I hope you have the same feeling. Um, you know, they, they can try, they can interrupt, they can, they can do whatever they can listen. They can, whatever they're going to do. Um, but I'm just, I'm more determined now than ever because of it, because truth needs to get out there. I can tell you, the phone. I, they don't I can, try to disrupt the message. Sorry, if sorry, the message oh, sorry. It's the, it's the delay. It's what I was saying is, you know, basic rule of thumb. They won't try to disrupt the message unless it's a message worth hearing. Right. Um, I got to say that lately, recently, I've been having a lot of uh, military jets flying over the building I live in. And it's strange because I'm not anywhere near a military base. I mean, the closest one would be like 120 miles away. Uh, yeah. And that's up in Minneapolis. So it's it's like I'm not near any military bases. And they fly directly over our building. Now, not only that, I've seen a few uh, black helicopters as well. I mean, they're not marked. So when they fly over, I don't know what, what they're what they're doing here, but I have seen them. Now I don't know if that's because I had a very substantial UFO sighting in July of last summer, or if it's for for other reasons like what we do online. I don't know, or my association with NOS. I don't know, but things have happened. Yes. Yeah. 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 So anyway, we get it, Dan. We really do. We yeah. do get it. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm still driven to do what I can. And I know you are as well, Dan. And I want to thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for you coming on tonight and trying to explain the complicated uh, schematics of crystal technology from the Galactic yeah, Federation. Really oh, I hope it wasn't too confusing. <laughs> you know, it wasn't very organized, uh, the information, but, you know, just uh, shooting from the hip on uh, sharing yes. information here. Can you right. tell everyone the video that the name of the podcast that you were on with Danny uh, that had that on there so everybody can watch it and know what we're talking about more in depth? Oh, yeah. Go to um, Danny Henderson um, uh, YouTube channel. Um, and, uh, you know, elenadenan.org. Um, I let's see. Um, I have it on my Facebook page, you know, facebook.com slash disclosure witness. Uh, there's a link there. Um, but it's very good. Elena did a, an incredible job on explaining how the physics of the spacecraft function in regards to how to work with the crystals and the core. You know, it's interesting, you know, how. Star Trek, you know, is talking about, you know, Scotty and the lithium crystals, you know, and the, uh, you know, it's all soft disclosure, you know, it's, uh, you know, prime directive, warp drive, teleportation, all the stuff. They were working with the Office of Naval Intelligence that was working with the Galactic Federation of Worlds to kind of bring us up to speed through science fiction because we've been so, um, uh, we've been, you know, so indoctrinated for generations of you know so that we think this stuff is science fiction but we find out it's it's all and and the truth is so much more fascinating than fiction yeah, yeah it is isn't it yeah agreed i i sincerely hope that you'll uh you'll be here again we really enjoyed your conversation our entire chat audience has been engaged almost nonstop the entire show. I just want you to know everybody is very engaged and interested in what you have to say. Thank you so much from, from everybody in the chat. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, well, my, my pleasure. Next time I'm going to have a whole lot more information because we're still learning and uh, yeah, always, I'll be happy to join you again.
Yeah, because yeah. this frill generator is relatively new information since it came out last year, right? Yeah, um, we're going to go into a deep dive with our uh, our friend, little Martian friend up here on Mars. That uh, and um, yeah, yeah, I'm just so grateful to him. He's been so gracious, uh, Jen Hanaredion, in in sharing everything. And uh, you know, he's he's just been an incredible. And and Elena, uh, I, I'm so grateful she makes it possible that uh and we're both interested in this together and so we're, we're learning together and uh we're wanting to share it with the world and uh we're putting out the crystal classes and uh hopefully uh we can give some right. practical advice that people can put into their their daily lives I wanted to say we actually have Elena Denon Kimlin back on the channel yeah. in two weeks. Oh, cool. uh, she'll be so here yeah. not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after the 24th, I think it is. Um, so uh, maybe we'll address some of the issues that we talked with Dan about tonight. So maybe we can get her perspective as well. And then everybody in chat room and watching online will get to that information is all awesome. hear that you need to come back in two weeks well you should be here every wednesday but you especially should be here in two weeks there you go. yes uh next week we're interviewing tony rodriguez uh yeah. he is a 20 years and back uh program experiencer he's he was part of the secret space program um and he was living on Ceres and uh, supposedly trained on Mars for deep space missions. So you want to come to that. That's very interesting. Oh, Tony, okay. Tony is awesome. Yeah, you'll, you'll have a great show with him. <laughs> yes. So we want to thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dan. And I do hope you come back when you're done with all your investigations. Keep us in mind because we really respect your knowledge and your work. And we would love to have you back. I look forward. Okay. So uh, from all of us on the panel, we want to say thank you for coming. And we'll see you next Wednesday at 9 p.m. EST. Take care and good night.